um, and uh, and you found a way now to possibly put rockets into space without it really being a rocket. What what is it that is the propellant? Well, that's dark, the nice thing about it. Dark matter. It doesn't uh, use propellant. It, uh, you know, propellantless propulsion. So you can imagine the skin of your aircraft being the thruster, if you will. It's a paradigm shift in the way we think about transportation. It does seem to violate a lot of old classical laws, like the rocket equation and other classical mechanics. But those equations are, gosh, almost 400 years old. We have a lot of new physics since then. And I think this is taking advantage of some of the, not the 20th century quantum mechanics as much, but more the 19th century E&M physics, electricity and magnetism. So you're right, it won't replace rockets because about 90% of the rockets by mass and volume is just fuel. Right. If you get rid of all that, if you get rid of all that then you could theoretically start from Earth and go straight into space and then back and forth all over. Um, that is crazy. That will change everything. So, so it, it, when you say the skin of the plane or the rocket or whatever you're talking about, are, are, is it kind of like static electricity? Is that what you're? It, well, I, I mean, I just out. don't even understand at all. <laughs> well, we, you know, well, it turned out initially we thought I thought for 20 years that it had to do with uh, electromagnetism. So that's electricity and magnetism together. But we found out in 2018, it was really just a static electricity effect, which meant no current and the charges are static. That's a big distinction. It just happened to be the area of expertise that I am at NASA is the electrostatic expert for the agency. So once I knew that that's what it was, you know, it was able to hit the ground running and to get thrusters that in theory should be able to lift under their own weight on Earth, provided they didn't have to carry anything yet. We're still working on getting it stronger, but that's essentially the gist of it. Static electricity itself has energy, because there's energy between charged particles. We're all familiar with the Coulomb energy, you know, like particles, like you know, positive particles repel, uh, you know, negative particles repel, but plus and minus attract. We're all familiar with that aspect of static right. electricity. What this has shown is that there is what we call electrostatic pressure in the presence of the field. It's basically uh, the pressure itself, which is not something I invented that's been around for 100 years or so, but the pressure itself can act in such a way that if it's unbalanced, it can give you a net momentum transfer to your system. That's what's new. Now, how exactly this does this, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'll ever know, but it seems to work. Wow. So this is easy to manufacture. It's easy to test. Now, we don't have a test to put in vacuum or her in the lab. Flying you know, cars. You know, put it in the earth a little bit and see what it does. Dr. Bueller, can I ask, I'm looking at a chart of your success, and it looks like in 2021, you just had phenomenal success. It just skyrockets up to just over a G of uh, thrust. What happened at that time where you just exponentially start, started getting having more and more success? Well, we know that uh, static electricity, this force, is <clears throat> based on asymmetrical capacitance. Now, asymmetrical capacitors have been around for 100 years. People have seen thrust in them, but they've been kind of ignored from the scientific community because of a, an ion wind effect if you do it in air. But if you ignore that, and if you actually test it in vacuum and test it correctly, you'll see that you'll get the thrust actually in the opposite direction of the ion wind. But that's a geometry effect. So, you know, parallel plate capacitors are parallel. If you change the dimension of one of them, you'll get a thrust. So, that's a geometry effect. But there are many ways to make an asymmetrical capacitor other than geometry. So, that's what we've explored, and that's what we've uncovered. And that helps. It makes things smaller, miniature, um, makes things two-dimensional, if you will, and, and lighter. So, that's the big advancement that we've made. Uh, is there a